Hi, thanks for watching the video. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Todd Beginski. I'm a Microsoft MVP and partner and CTO at Canvas. In this video, I'm going to show you different patterns you can use inside of your Power Apps to handle errors. This is very important to collect errors and telemetry about your Power App because if your Power App's not working and all your users say is it doesn't work, that's not going to be good enough. So just like a regular application you build for the web or a desktop or any other format, you need to have proper error handling patterns in place. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can handle those errors. And in a subsequent video, I'm going to show you how you can log those errors as well as telemetry about your application to Azure Application Insights. So let's get started. Okay, so in this particular Power App that I've created, its job is to demonstrate to you how you can handle errors inside of a Power App. And so it has a few different things in here that I'm not showing in this video, which include this section down here at the bottom for sending data to application insights. I'm going to make another video after this one about that, so you can watch that video and learn after you've handled the error, how do you actually send that error and log it to a place like Azure Application Insights, for example. But I'm going to just focus on the error handling for this video right now. And the first place I would like to start is my general pattern that I'm using to actually handle the errors. And so really the key piece of how I'm handling the errors is this toggle control that I've added right here. You can see if you look in the properties at the top right, it's of type toggle control. To add one of these to your own Power App, go to the insert, controls, and then select toggle. So how the heck is toggle control able to help me do error handling? Well, it's pretty clever solution here, I think, on how this works. And so the first thing I'd like to point out is the on check event right here inside of the toggle control. So every time on check fires is when somebody turns the toggle control on. And every time that the toggle control gets turned off, there is a different method in here called on uncheck that will fire. And so you'll notice I have nothing in on uncheck. I don't need it for this pattern. I just need on check. And so look what happens when this toggle control changes. It checks to see if this particular global variable named error occurred. If error occurred, which means if error occurred is true, then make a collection and call it call errors and pass in these global variables. What screen did it occur on? What was the error text? And what was the error code? These, these things give me the ability to log details about my error so that I can do something about it when I'm programming it with. Now, I haven't done anything in this particular example in this video besides write this error to the collection, which then is bound to the screen. You can see down here in this gallery right here. But before we get to that, where is global error occurred being set and how are we using it? So I'd like to point out a couple other properties here on my toggle control. If we look over at the properties here, you can see on unchecked, on select, and on change, they're all false. I don't have to do anything to those properties with this pattern. But what I do do is I set the default value for this control equal to that same GBL error occurred variable right here. So that's its default value. I have the reset set to false. And if global error occurred is false, the text that this particular control will display is no error, as you can see there. But if we do have an error and GBL error occurred value gets set to true, then the toggle control will display error. A couple other things I'd like to point out if you use this pattern as well 
is that when we come down here to the display mode, notice I make the display mode disabled. And the reason I do that is I don't want anybody clicking on this in the application and actually simulating an error without properly doing it because the information I need to handle an error wouldn't be there and this could get quite confusing too. So I make it disabled. Um, there's really not much else to setting up that control besides the configuration of these properties here. Now, the cool part about using this global variable is no matter which screen I put this error control on in my entire app, it can react to that global variable getting set and handle the error. So it's kind of, if you think of it, like a piece of code that you're running anywhere in your app anytime an error occurs. And what's going to indicate that error occurred? Well, like we saw, it was setting this, val this variable somewhere in my app equal to true. So let's see how we can actually simulate that. So if I come in here to this button called Create Global Error, I bet you know what the first line of code is. There it is, Set Global Error Occurred to True. So I'm simulating this with a button here. Pretty simple, right? But imagine that you just made a call to a connector and you want to find out if you got the data back you wanted. So you made a call to the connector, you got the data back, and maybe you're just going to count the rows of it and see did I get anything back. And if your row counts zero, you know an error occurred. If your row counts not zero, then you know you got your data back and there's no error. So that's the type of way you could use this and wire it into code inside of your Power App. So after I set global error occurred equal to true, I'm setting some other variables here too. I'm setting one for screen. Which screen did it happen on? This, in this case, you can see this is the home screen. What is the error code? Well, I just made one up, 911. And what is the error text I'd like to display? In this case, I just have an example. We have a problem. So now, because I've set these values here, when I go play the app and I click Create Global Error, watch the toggle control. You see that? It flipped over. And now it's toggled on, and that global error variable was set to true. So it ran the code inside of it, and it added those items, as I showed you before, to the error collection, which is bound to this gallery right here. So if we take a closer look at the gallery here, we can see that the item in here, this one is this item dot screen. There's my code, and there's my text. And if I come and actually look at my collection inside of the Power App, there's those three values again that I simply added inside of my toggle control right here. So I'm using this collection, as I mentioned, for demonstration purposes. You could add things to a collection too, and then maybe submit them all at once to a place where you'd like to handle that error. Or you could do pop-ups in your screen and tell people that they had an error and things about that as well. So there's all kinds of different things you can do with it here. But the key point is how simple this is with your toggle control. Now, because this is a global error, and my toggle control can process this. If I put this into play mode, and I'm going to clear global error. Basically, when I click to that button, what I did here is you can probably imagine I set the global error occurred to false. I set the error text back to it's all good and no errors for the code. And then I created a collection with those values to indicate so everyone can see here on the screen there's no error that occurred. And you can see that the collection updates that as well. That's really good for this screen, but what about if I'm on a different screen in my Power App? So here I go to screen two, and I have another button that says Create Global Error. Check it out. Same code, different error. I said this one is happening on screen two, which as you can see down here is the name of my screen. This one, I just sent a 401 and I'm simulating I got an unauthorized error, for example. So when I go click this button now, you'll notice that my collection here is the exact same gallery. I just copied and pasted it from one page in the app to the other. It's, it's going after the same call errors collection. And so 
as I go back to my home screen now, I can see that error condition does exist because my toggle control is set to error. And I do have the errors that occurred on the other screen as well. So this is outstanding, right? Because now I can take this error toggle control and I can simply put it on a blank page in my Power App that's never linked to from anywhere else. And its only job is to handle my errors. And then I know wherever I'm at inside of my code, in order to handle an error, all I have to do is set my global variable equal to true, that indicates my error occurred, and then set any other variables of things that I would like to report about the context of that error. So that's how we can do it for global variables and throughout the entire app. But what if you need to have some error handling and you need to do it at a, like a per page level at the context variable example. So I've replicated the same exact code here and I've taken this one a little bit different direction. Instead of actually showing you the collection of the errors, I'm actually going to create errors here for, and I'm going to use context variables that are mapped just to this page. And I also have another right here toggle control. And this toggle control works much the same way, except it's using local context variables. So here you can see I, this context variable that controls error handling on this, this local page level is called LOC error occurred. And if an error occurred, then I'm going to update the context variables for error text and variable that is a color for a background. Now, if no error occurred, I'm going to update the text to say it's all good. And notice I'm using a different background color here than I am here. These background colors are actually used up here in this rectangle right here that I have added to the screen. And you can see its fill is that LOC error background color value that I'm setting when I'm handling the error. I also have a couple icons here. See this one? This one says no error and you can see a check mark. But I also have one that indicates an error has occurred. And this one is actually a warning icon, but it's underneath the check one so we can't see it. But these icons here have their visibility set to did error occur so this one is loc error occurred. So if error occurred is true, the error icon will be visible. However, if LOC error occurred is false, you can see indicated with the bang I put in front of it, then this particular no error icon is visible, which is the case right now. So let's go ahead and create a context error. So to do that, I'm going to just update my context variables. And here's the one that my uh, toggle control is bound to that handles my error. And here's the error code and the error text that I wish to pass in in my simulation. So if I go play the app now and I click create context error, watch the top bar, the text, the color and the icon. See, as you can see how I pointed out before, I'm able to drive my user interface off of the error handling. I can just bind it up to those different properties. So now if I go clear this context error, it's back to it's all good. And you can see the control for my toggle goes back to indicating no error. So error, update the UI, no error, revert the UI to a good state. So you can use these error handling patterns in conjunction with pop-ups or simple displays at the top of a page like this, however you want in your Power App. But as you can see, by merely taking this approach, it's very little code you need to do that gives you the flexibility to run that code to handle your error no matter where you're at in the Power App. And you only have to write that error handling code one time, which is a very, very nice feature. The other thing that I like to point out about the toggle control here real quick is the uncheck. Now, as I mentioned before, the toggle control, when the value is set to true, 
it's going to get checked. And we saw the code there. But when it's also set to false, and it's untoggled, if you will, because I'm using the context variables here, and I want to update the user interface accordingly, I also use the uncheck method here with the same approach. Did an error occur? If so, put in what the error is. If not, then put in the values that indicate no error has occurred, and my user interface will react accordingly. The other thing is to point out about this particular approach with the context variables is on select and on change are both false. The default value is equal to the context variable I'm using to track if an error occurred. The false text is no error, and the true text is error. Everything else down here is just standard stuff um, except for this setting. The display mode, again, I set the display mode to be disabled so I don't accidentally click it or anything like that. So to implement this pattern inside of your own Power App, I think the easiest thing you could do is probably just download this Power App and you can find the link to it below this video. Um, I uploaded it to the Power App Sample App Gallery and you can get it there and just download this and get going with it on your own and then you will be able to watch and observe and use this code in your own Power App. And like I said before, all you need to do in the case of the global variable is put that toggle control on a hidden screen somewhere in your Power App. And for the context variable approach, you're going to need that uh, particular control on whatever screen you're working with those context variable. Uh, but you can make it invisible by setting its visibility property to, to false. So it'll be there the whole time. It'll be doing its job, but your users will never even know about it. So stay tuned for my next video and subscribe to the channel because you're going to get an, uh, another video, as I mentioned, following on to this one that shows you, okay, after we have an error, how do we actually log that to an error logging mechanism such as Azure Application Insights? Hey, thanks again for watching the video. I hope it came in helpful for you. Please go hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss out on the follow-up video to this one. It really helps me out too. If you'd like to work together sometime, hit me up at canvas.com. We work with people we meet on YouTube all the time. And finally, if you'd like to see more cool videos about technology and power apps, check them out down here. I'll see you next time.